Hello dear students. Today we are going to begin with a new lesson. That is lesson number 4 from your science textbook. Name Nutrition in Living Organisms. Children, can you see these children? They are malnourished. That is they are not getting proper nutrients from the food. What could be the reason? Well, they can be poor and therefore not, they are not able to get proper food. But sometimes what happens? Though the children are not poor, they are very much fond of eating junk food. And from the junk food we don't get any nutrients. Or very less nutrients are provided from the junk food. So in that case also, if we continuously eat the junk food, we can be malnourished like these children shown in the figure. Okay, so what do you exactly mean by malnutrition? Well, it's it occurs when all the nutrients that are that the body needs are not obtained in the proper proportion from the diet. This happens when the person does not get sufficient food or when the diet is not balanced. So could you please tell what are the ways to prevent malnutrition? Yes, you are right. Eat proper nourishing diet. Then what could be the other? Avoid eating junk food. And exercise or play outdoor games. This third point is equally important because if we don't exercise, our food will not get digested properly. And if the food is not digested properly, the nutrients which we intake from our food will not be absorbed by our body properly. Okay. So, though we intake good amount of diet, but if it is not um, absorbed into our body, it is not useful. So, exercise plays very important role in absorption of nutrients. So, always exercise or play outdoor games. But children, do you know what exactly is nutrition? Well, you have studied it in standard 7. It is the process of taking in and using food which takes place in living organism. On basis of the requirement of the nutrients by our body, the nutrients are of two types, macronutrients and micronutrients. Macronutrients are required by our body in large quantities and the examples of macronutrients are carbohydrates, proteins and fats. Whereas vitamins and minerals are required in very less quantities by our body but are very important as well. So, vitamins and minerals come under micronutrients. Micro means small and macro means large. Thus, we have two types of nutrients, macronutrients and micronutrients. Then, why does the body need nutrients? What is the need for nutrition? Let us discuss. To supply energy required for doing work. We get all the nutrients from the food and this nutrients supply energy to do various activities. It is also required for growth and development of the body. Then to replace the damaged cells and repair tissue. That is every day our cells are getting damaged and this needs to be replaced and that is possible only because of good nutrients to fight diseases. Our WBCs in our blood fight against the diseases. And who will provide strength to our WBCs? Of course the nutrients. So nutrients are very much important to fight the diseases also. Basically there are two types of nutrition. Autotrophic nutrition and heterotrophic nutrition. Autotrophic nutrition means some organisms prepare their own food. That is for example plants. Plants prepare their own food with the help of sunlight, water and chlorophyll and nourish themselves. Therefore all plants are called as autotrophic. 
whereas other organisms other than plants depend on other organisms for the food or plants for their food such uh, such organisms are called as heterotrophs and such type of nutrition is called as heterotrophic nutrition now let us understand why are plants called as autotrophic children do you know why are plants green in color well the leaves of the plant contain chloroplast in which green color pigment called as chlorophyll is enclosed and this chlorophyll is used for synthesizing the food of plants by the process called as photosynthesis also the leaves of the plants have microscopic opening called as stomata through which they take carbon dioxide or co2 from the air Thus, carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and water from the soil combine with each other in presence of sunlight and chlorophyll to synthesize food that is glucose and during this process oxygen is given out. Thus, plants convert light energy into chemical energy and store it in the form of food. Besides leaves, photosynthesis also takes place in other parts like green stems. because this because of the green color they contain chlorophyll water minerals and salts which are nutrients of plants are absorbed by the roots from the soil and further carried to various parts of the plant through the tissue called as xylem and phloem transport system in plants consists of xylem and phloem xylem carries water and other minerals from roots to other parts of the plant whereas phloem transport the food that is glucose which is synthesized in the leaves to other part of the plants so xylem and phloem plays a very important role in carrying food and water to various parts of the plants so they are called as transport system of plants children do you know what is chemosynthesis we all know that green plants which are called as autotrophs prepare their own food with the help of sunlight water and chlorophyll as they utilize sunlight this process is called as photosynthesis but there are few autotrophs that is plants which do not use sunlight as sunlight is not available for them that is the plants inside the deep ocean they in the deep ocean sunlight is not available then how will they prepare their own food well they have another option they synthesize their own food with the help of chemical energy released during chemical reactions and these are called as chemosynthetic plants so instead of the a uh, light energy they utilize the energy released during the chemical reaction plants produce carbohydrates by the process of photosynthesis and carbohydrates are made from carbon hydrogen and oxygen also proteins are made from carbon hydrogen oxygen and nitrogen then from where do plants obtain nitrogen necessary for the synthesis of proteins well air contains nitrogen but the plants cannot utilize gaseous nitrogen it needs to be fixed that is this gaseous nitrogen needs to be converted into compounds called as nitrates and nitrides which can be absorbed by the plants but how is this nitrogen with, which is atmospheric nitrogen converted into nitrates and nitrites well it is due to biological nitrogen fixation as well as due to atmospheric nitrogen fixation now let's understand what is biological fixation of nitrogen in the root nodules of some leguminous plants like peas or fenugreek 
some bacteria called as rhizobium is present which converts atmospheric nitrogen into nitrates also other bacteria which are present in the soil called as azotobacter converts atmospheric nitrogen into nitrates nitrogen fixation also takes place in atmosphere during lightning and this is called as atmospheric fixation of nitrogen during lightning atmospheric oxygen and nitrogen combines with each other to form nitric oxide and this nitric oxide is further oxidized to form nitrogen dioxide this nitrogen dioxide thus form reacts with the rain water to form nitric acid which is further converted into nitrates or nitrites also and thus the nitrates and nitrites thus formed is absorbed by the plants easily so that's all for today dear students i hope you have understood if you have really understood this video you have to complete the following questions as your assignment thanks for watching